Good morning, Washington. I'm Mike Kanina. It's 827 making headlines today. The Department of Homeland Security has an ongoing review of security protocol and measures here and is looking into possible changes that could include more personnel, new technology and possibly a higher fence or other physical barriers. DOMA has been ruled unconstitutional in a vote of five to four with Justice Kennedy joining the more liberal justices on the court. He also vowed to continue that fight on the Affordable Care Act. The Lexus arrived here to the D.C. region about three weeks ago on August 25th. The president said that progress stalled in our country because there was a lot of finger pointing on both sides of this debate about racial inequality. Mike Conning right. was doing a live report on Thursday on a snow sculpture contest in Washington, D.C. when he started taking on enemy fire there. Just below the media stand where we are, the last of the police vehicles, and then just behind that are the media vehicles. Doctors have state-of-the-art technology at their fingertips. They have access to x-rays and endoscopic cameras and it's 30 feet by 50 feet in size. All of these trains canceled. There were certainly some people on the train car that I was in, foreigners and tourists who were coming to Washington for some sightseeing. The homeowner says it could have been a lot worse. Half the tree fell in the backyard, the other half fell here on the carport. 13,000 feet in the air. It's all a matter of timing. Stop. I finished in just over three minutes. I'm just happy I finished it all. <sighs> For the vast majority of the Filipinos, they're practicing Catholics. There are homes that line the streets, and I want to give you a tour inside one typical home. Did you know they make jeggings in corduroy? <laughs> and I found the perfect shirt to match, and I actually think that you would wear this, right? <laughs> that looks very it's good. It's kind of the... Uh, you say that's you for... Know. Catherine, I think I think you Liberace look. <laughs> it's it's something. But it's I spent something. days in that room with him hearing his report because I think we shot in there oh. for like two weeks. So, so I, I'm remember? very familiar. Yeah, yeah. She knows. Mike Kaneen is the kid's name. Uh, Mike. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mike. <laughs> More than 220,000 white marble headstones line the hills of Arlington National Cemetery. It's all inspiring and brings about all kinds of feelings of patriotism and respect. Goosebumps. Goosebumps. A Memorial Day tradition, at each gravesite, an American flag is proudly posted, including the tomb of the unknown soldier. Just to honor our fallen brothers and sisters who gave their life specifically for this flag. It's an annual tribute. The flags distributed and delivered by hundreds of soldiers from the old guard. It's definitely humbling. It's, uh, not a lot of people can do this. One by one. We measure right from the headstone. And it makes sure that the flag is standing up right. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Every headstone has a story a number, a name, where they served. They're all paid homage with red, white, and blue. It's just powerful imagery. You just feel like I'm, I'm a part of something greater than I am. It's an exhausting and emotional task that takes about four hours to complete. But to be blessed with uh, some sunshine and some clouds, it's a good day so far. If you're reflecting on what you're doing as you're doing it, you don't really notice the heat. These soldiers say they consider this not a job, but a privilege. It's something different, a different way to celebrate Memorial Day because some of these people don't have families to come out and put a flag in front of it so it's kind of nice to be out here with the fellow soldiers and then to honor those who came before us. Over the next few days cemetery officials expect tens of thousands of visitors to pass through these gates to honor the service members buried here. On Monday formal Memorial Day events get underway at 10 30 a.m. with a U.S. Navy band concert followed by the formal wreath laying ceremony. At Arlington National Cemetery Mike Kinney News Channel 8. Now, a few years ago, we introduced you to Candace Adams Ismerl, a 33-year-old D.C. woman who defied the odds. Well, that's right. She survived a form of breast cancer that's called triple negative. It's more aggressive with fewer treatment options. Now, to educate others about the disease, she documented her double mastectomy and chemotherapy on her blog, Kisses to Cancer. Well, today, Candace's fight with cancer is not over. But as Mike Kaneen reports, that's not stopping her from living her life or starting a family. The Ismuel home is full of life these days. Our downstairs is all baby. Two weeks ago, Candace and Ryan Ismuel became parents of twin boys. I was really confident that this was going to happen. Uh, we were going to be parents. But building this family did not come easily. In 2010, not long after their engagement, Candace was diagnosed with breast cancer. Because of her treatments, the couple delayed their wedding until 2012. We got married and it was a whirlwind. It was beautiful. Doctors later declared Candace was in remission. But since then, she and Ryan have faced new challenges, struggling to get pregnant, devastated by miscarriages. Then last year, Candace had a seizure. Next thing you know, we are in the ER and they say, your CT shows the metastasis to the brain. The cancer was back. 
This time in her brain, abdomen, lungs, and liver. No lumps or bumps, no headaches. I mean, I was completely normal. She immediately underwent brain surgery and radiation. She's still receiving low doses of so-called maintenance chemo once every three weeks and likely for the rest of her life. It's kind of like having the flu all the time. It's tough, but it's working. The cancer is microscopic now, undetectable in scans. Throughout it all, their resolve to have children never wavered. Years ago, they followed a doctor's advice to freeze some embryos. Chemotherapy kills fast-growing cells, which attacks your ovaries. Becoming parents became reality when Candace's cousin, a nurse and already a mom, offered the ultimate gift to be their surrogate. And she said, I'm plan B. I said, why don't I just do this for you? It would be an honor to me. They acknowledge not everyone will understand their decision to become parents, despite Candace's health. If the unthinkable happens <clears throat> tomorrow, they're doing the right thing. Still, they did consider the risks that Candace might never live to see her boys, that Ryan could become a single father. But you just you focus and you say, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna let this get us down, you know. So um, I just I wanted her to be a mom. By us choosing to have the babies. We chose life and we chose a future. The boys were born November 4th, election day. Rafe coming first at seven pounds, 15 ounces. His younger brother Ryder a minute later at seven pounds, four ounces. Doctors say they're healthy and growing by the day. I'm biased, but they're pretty cute. It's been a long journey with many ups and downs, but today cancer is an afterthought. The babies capture Candace's attention now. It's about the moments really and you have to live each day one at a time. In Northeast, Mike Kinnean, ABC7 News. Wow. Right now, the sculpture uh, contest, the judging is underway. Shots fired, shots fired. We've got incoming. Uh, but the sculpture contest, the judging is underway. We've got a big crowd, and I've, I've taken it for the team here, trying to get this snowball fight going. I'm taking it all directions. Here we go. All right. Is that all you got? Is that all you got? Uh, so just not the face, not the face. Um, so the snowball fight was technically canceled because of the snow conditions, but now the amount of snow and the rain we've gotten, it's wet enough. It is a perfect snowball conditions. I've got some pre-made here just in case. Watch out. All right. Jack, can you name one lawmaker for me who supports this? Oh, I could, but I won't for them. Why? I will be able to soon. Because, Why? oh, to protect their privacy, we're still working on the legislation. The legislation, as you speak tonight, there are people drafting it. But soon enough, Mike, we'll but, be happy but to. But, Jack, you realize that the president and first lady, they came out and celebrated Michael Sam coming out. Even if this legislation, and keyword is if, were to get the support needed in the House and the Senate, which seems unlikely, maybe p impossible, what is the point? There is no way the president would sign any legislation like the this. The point is, well, we hope not. We hope we can get it through. I wouldn't take it on. The Why point, wouldn't the president do that? The point is to make a point. The point is... Exactly. To, so the, isn't this just a stunt? It's not a stunt. It, we think the legislation can go through. Mike Kaneen got an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Angela McCaskill today, and he's in our newsroom with the latest. Mike, tell us about it. Alison Gallaudet's president last week said some felt it was inappropriate for the associate provost of diversity and inclusion to sign this petition, putting gay marriage up for a vote in Maryland. Today, McCaskill opened up about this controversy, but following her attorney's advice, she won't discuss her personal views on same-sex marriage. She says she'll do that in the voting booth. Still, several times she emphasized she loves everyone, gay or straight. I am not anti-gay. I never have been and I never will be. I have nothing but love for all of the members of the Gallaudet community. Since news broke that she was placed on administrative leave, Chief of Diversity Angela McCaskill says she and her two sisters, who also work at Gallaudet University, have received ugly, hateful emails from some gay marriage supporters. And to have this tarnishing my name, my reputation, my character hurts. After our interview, McCaskill held an afternoon press conference in Annapolis, where she's received support from Governor Martin O'Malley, conservative groups like the Family Research Council, as well as gay rights activists like Marylanders for Marriage Equality. Signing that petition is a right that I have as a citizen of the state of Maryland. Earlier today, Gallaudet University President Alan Hurwitz sent a message to the campus community that the school would like McCaskill to return as chief diversity officer. Quote, while I expect that a resolution of this matter can be reached, this will require that she and the university community work together to respond to the concerns that have been raised. But McCaskill's attorney says Hurwitz has made a 180 degree turn compared to his previous emails. We are cautious. Uh, 
about his intentions because he had an opportunity to do this uh, some time ago. President Hurwitz says he placed McCaskill on leave as a, quote, prudent action to allow the university and her the time to consider this situation after the emotions of first reaction subsided. McCaskill's attorney says their lines of communication are open and he hopes for a resolution by the end of the week. Reporting live in the newsroom, Mike Kinnean, ABC 7 News.